the book will know which is the book we're talking about, okay? Allan Kardec, The Medium's Book. This book has been a challenge for me since day one, and it's not the one, the only book written by Kardec, but it is the one that touched me deeper, I would say like that, because this is the one that uh, I'm using to practice when I can, charity. So this is, let, let put it this way, this is my main Bible, if you like. So as we do have Bibles for IT, for a lot of things, as people used to say, I can tell that this is kind of my Bible, right? But uh, in the Spiritism, we do not have Bible as such, right? It is a contest I'm using here. So we're going to start this study through the introduction. Why through the introduction? Quite often when we buy a book, we don't want to waste time. We want to go to the first chapter straight away. And quite often the introduction brings us quite a lot of information, not only to help us to understand the book, but the introduction itself sometimes brings us knowledge. And even more importantly, bring us material to start to think about what we are doing here, right? So I will start reading. Uh, every time we go read, we read something, something comes to our mind, we'll stop, we'll comment, we'll make questions to see if anyone can help us. And uh, let me start, let me, give me that pleasure, let me start to, to read at least the first sentences and then we'll carry on, all right? Is everyone comfortable with that? Yep. Good, pretty good. Introduction. Each and every day, experience confirms our opinion that the difficulties and disappointments encountered in the practice of spiritism results from ignorance of the science principles. Well, let me start to make my first comment, right? Science principles. To those that are not familiar with, Spiritism is also a science. We do pay attention on the existing science, the current science at the moment. And we also paid attention to science back then when Kardec was putting everything together. Why you say science? Because we do speak about things, physics, fluids, energy, and a few other things. And to understand mediumship, we will need to have a little bit of knowledge about that. And you see, oh dear, I need to go to school again. I need to learn physics. It will be very simple in comparison of some physics. We're not talking about quantum physics here, at least not yet. So we need to be aware that spiritism also is a science, okay? We are happy to notice that the work we have done to protect its utterance against the pitfalls of being a novitiate has been effective and that many have avoided them by reading this book. In my opinion, right, the first sentence is bringing already a lot to my mind in a way that uh, I never thought spiritism would be a science. I never thought this book in particular has been proven as a guide, a guideline to prevent people to be misreading other information. As Kardec says here, against pitfalls. And I believe that when we search a doctor, we want a certain that this doctor have gone through the normal procedures to learn what he is about to do. And also that he is a specialist in what you need assistance. In a certain way, what I'm trying to say is, mediums must study mediums book. This will prevent us to make mistakes. This will make our path easier. This will help us not only to help ourselves, 
but to help others. Saying that, I would like to ask, what do you think about that, Munir? You're on mute. Yes, I, I uh, agree with that, Sukilami. And the introduction, just like any other Kardec, of our Kardec books, the introductions are very important because they give us actually the right lenses to read the book. It's like having a meal, but not getting the cutlery. You know, if you're eating fish, you have the right uh, knife to eat fish and so on. And that's why it's very important. And Kardec was very clear at the beginning. You know, it's important to go through the book, not, you know, to uh, have or not mediumship, to develop or not mediumship, but actually to avoid the pitfalls that, you know, um, a novice is, is going to, uh, to find when, you know, dealing with the, the mediumistic phenomena. Charles, do you want to add anything on top of it? Yes, maybe just... Uh... When Kardec is talking about science, of course, he used uh, positive scientific uh, Cartesian methodology. But the difference with the uh, traditional science is he used this method to study mediumship or to study the, the, the spiritual phenomenon. Huh? And the second thing is just as a, as a small complement. Uh, would you send uh, your uh, son, for instance, uh, drive the car uh, downtown uh, in Paris, uh, making three times the turn of the Arc de Triomphe without having a driving license or without having uh, learned a little bit about uh, what he's driving? Certainly not. And mediumship is the same. So at the time of Kardec, of course, a lot of people were medium. You had this uh, turning table uh, uh, fashion and so on. And uh, he saw that a lot of people fall into the traps, huh, like obsession and uh, things like that. So he first wrote a, a smaller book, which was uh, instruction, Practical Instruction for Spiritist uh, uh, Practice. Huh? And uh, it was too much and not enough at the same time. That's why in 1861, he made this complete book, which is really... Uh, I would say until today, the best book on the subject. Indeed, indeed. And um, by the way, even with a drive license, I went to the roundabout on Champs Elysees, and it's not easy. The Arc de Triomphe is difficult, <laughs> very difficult. But uh, let's continue there. Uh, it is quite natural for those who have concerned themselves with the spiritism to desire to personally communicate with the spirits. Then I, I always thought about, by the way, I, I was born in a spiritism family, spiritist family. So I always been very familiar with what's going on there. But uh, some people don't think it's natural. Some people, are really scared and afraid. And I will tell you my first secret for you guys. You are also in a spirit. And as you are in spirit, there's no difference between us in the body and us outside the body. We just have a little difference in the matter. That's it. But what is inside is exactly the same. So it is natural. And everything we'll see here through this study is natural. There is no magic. There is no magic wand. There is no miracle. We are following laws, nature and God's laws. They are basically the same, right? And to those that still feel like, oh, well, you know, this is not natural, Give a time, give a time. Through this study, you will have enough information to come to your own conclusion, if it's natural, or if you want to decide it's not natural, to remain with your thoughts, it's not natural, so be it. But it is natural, okay? And second thing that comes to my mind is, why do you want to talk to the spirits? There's a lot of people that want to talk to the spirits without any effort. I want to go somewhere, I want to talk, I want to make questions, but 
why? What is that behind? I'm not going to answer that. I just want that question to remain with you guys. So through our journey, I hope that you can answer that question yourselves. Hi, Nancy. Raise your hand. Hey, Guilherme. How are you? I'm all right. And you? <laughs> um, I, I was just, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, I was just remember when my mother um, worked uh, at the Spiritist Center in the city, Belém. I'm uh, from the north of Brazil, and um, she um, knew a woman that wanted her problems to be, um, to have a solution, to have a solution from the spirits. She wanted to talk to the spirits, to have a solution for all her problems. And I think at the end of the day, she, she gave up because, because she, the first person that had to, <laughs> to, to, to find a solution to her problems. That's it. And there are many, many, many people like this that wants to talk to, that want to talk to the spirits to, to okay. have some solutions. That's it. Let, let me use your example to share what I, what I think. Well, well, internet is like that, guys. Don't don't worry. It's part of the game. And uh, let me share something. Over the years, the I, I've seen what you said. A lot of people wants to have questions to fix their own problems. But the practice and this very well known book by some people tell us that spirits, high spirits, let me put it like that, higher spirits, more elevated spirits will not come to us giving that kind of answers, right? We need to understand that we need to find our own answers. And if you do have that practice to be asking spirits, should I buy a car? Should I rent a, whatever? Should I change my house? Should I move? Most probably the spirits that will be giving you that information, perhaps they don't want to do anything bad to you. They don't want to mislead you, but I would be very careful listening to them. I think that's a very kind way to say. It. I would be very careful listening to them because as I said, high elevated spirits will not come to fulfill that need that we have. And in theory, we should have all the answers. Okay. So yeah, Christine, you raise your hand. Yes, I just wanted to share the experience I had about a week ago. Um, I was at my auntie and uncle's place with my grandson visiting and my auntie and uncle live in an old house and they've given me examples of things that have been happening in their house um, but they don't they're not concerned about it they just deal with it and just laugh at it sometimes um, but this particular night when I was putting my grandson to bed, I felt a coldness and I put my grandson to bed and I walked across to my room. Now I eventually went to sleep, but within two hours I woke up with a start and I, got, I went to get up, but I was being held back and I felt very protective of my grandson and I said, no, let me go. And I went into my grandson's room to make sure he was all right. But I went yeah. to go through the house to check the house and I couldn't get past a certain point. I was being stopped. And I just turned around and said, whoever you are, I'm a relative, I'm no threat, but don't touch my grandson. And that's all I could think of to say. And, and everything was all right. But I, I just... 
I just didn't feel comfortable with that spirit. It's not one, but it's necessary. Okay. Oh, I will make a comment very, very soon, Christine. Guys, I, I need to yes. ask for your help. Anytime you're not making a questions, we are not having any, any chat, I would ask you to close your mic because otherwise the interference sometimes make more difficult to us to understand 100% what the other person is talking. So please bear with us. We have quite a lot of people in the room. So if you're not talking to us, you're not asking anything or whatever, please keep your mic closed for the time being, okay? Appreciate that. Uh, Christine, uh, what can I tell you? First of all, we need to be clear that not everything are related to the spirits. What, what I'm saying that, because just, I'm not telling you that I'm not believe what you just said. It's not, not that at all. I'm just trying to use an example to everyone. You said you felt like a cold coming, right? Mm -hmm. For example, here outside, just now it's about four degrees Celsius, right? If yeah. my son next door open the door, will come out to my room, right? Yeah. So we have first to eliminate all the possibilities that are not spiritual related. And then after that, we start to compile enough information to create like kind of dossier. Well, when I mean enough information to create a dossier is that sometimes only one event is not enough to us to come to a conclusion. So it's like, remember that we said that spiritism is a science? So we need yes. us to act as a scientist. Well, it happens once, yes. it happens twice. It has happened more often. So now I have to pay more attention. What is that? Well, we always can have, for another example, we may have a kind of medical need. We may have something related to our age. We may have something related to whatever. So we need first to eliminate every other hypothesis before we say it is spiritual. It is related to a spirit. Right. But what you said to us could quite well be. Right. And the most important when you experience things like that, uh, I, I don't know the background of everyone here yet, but there is something called prayer. Prayer is something that you connect yourself with the universe or to God or to whoever you, your belief is. And that is our energy connection is a powerful energy connection. And through this exercise, through this study, we will learn about energy. We will learn about vibration, about different levels, different type of spirits, and everything become clearer. So what I would tell you, if you do have scenarios like that, your reaction was very normal. I would act in the same way, protect those one you love, right? And the best way to deal with that is to connect with your guardian angel, with your benefactor, to God, or to the universe, depending on what your belief is, right? But the most thing, the most important thing is connect your soul, your heart, to do to something that we know is greater than us. The how can I say that? The, the master of the universe, the engineer of the universe, connects to him. Yeah. I call him God. And that when we do that, we start to create protection to ourselves in those events. Okay? Yeah. All right. And well, Indeed. I won't give you everything because <laughs> we have a lot to learn together. And, but I would like to ask now what Charles and Mooney would say yes. about it. I would maybe just compliment a little bit uh, this, this paragraph of the medium's book. Uh, basically, there are two, two situations which, are, uh, which happen uh, usually. The first one is the one Kardec is mentioning here that it's natural, the, the, the mother who lost a son the, uh, or the person who lost a, a, a mother or whatever, has a natural uh, desire to enter in contact with her. Huh? So this is something that you can see, huh? this work is intended to facilitate their journey. So it means Kardec is not forbidding that, he's not telling, no, you can do that only after two years of course of spiritism and one year of course of mediumship and so on. He's quite open to approach this phenomenon. Huh? And the second, phenom the second situation that happens is 
uh, as you as you told Christine, uh, sometimes there are some phenomena happening spontaneously and uh, threatening or uh, jeopardizing or uh, making noise or whatever. <clears throat> and the, the, the fact you mentioned is happening very, very, very often. And what we can deduce from it is uh, you had the authority to talk to that entity since after that the, the phenomenon stopped. Uh, so, but of course, in any way, either case, either situation, uh, to know this book will facilitate our journey as Kardec is writing. I just want to add, Guilherme, that I think at the end of this paragraph is, is very clear. You know, mediumship, although you experience the phenomenon before knowing the theory or study the theory without actually much experience regarding the, uh, the phenomenon, it is, it is important to know that it's not just the fact, like if you know how to write, you are not a writer immediately and let alone a good writer. <laughs> So that's what Kardec is saying, you know, the, um, the phenomenon presents itself in so many different ways and people experience that. And also uh, uh, people want to study, but it's not enough just to know how it works, how to, as uh, Kardec put here, you know, how to place the fingers in, uh, in his, his case was, uh, you know, uh, on the table and uh, pick up the pencil and, and so on. What he's saying is that let's look at the essence and the same when approaching the spirit, just like in, in our daily life, we, when we approach someone, we approach with a purpose. We have to have very clear, if it's serious, we will be seen as serious people. But if we approach someone to, to, to tell them a joke and completely uh, uh, unknown to us, and we just approach the person and say, can I tell you a joke? And, you know, it sounds a bit weird. It's the same with um, the spirits and the spirit world. You know, there should be a purpose. And Kardec puts that the first one that, the first thing that comes into our mind is, oh, now I can talk to my relatives, my, my loved ones that, you know, return to, to spirit. Very good, very good. And I tell you what, when Charles was saying, was speaking, uh, something came to my mind. Mediumship is everywhere. Medium phenomena is everywhere. It's in the spiritist institutions, Catholic, Anglican, everywhere, everywhere. It's not something you can contain in a particular place or in a particular group, right? And we are here not speaking to spiritists. We are speaking to everyone, right? So if something seems to be different to what you know, different to what you believe, please speak up. Because we are not speaking only to spiritists, we're speaking to everyone. And we, Kardec never said that spiritism or mediumship is particular to a group. This book is a kind of manual that can be used by everyone, okay? And we have two hands. Liz, you, hand your, you raise your hand first, so here you go. Um, yeah, I just would like to share an opinion. Um, you know, when we talk about the spiritual world, the spiritual world, sometimes people have uh, this idea that it is something that is separate from what we are living now as incarnate in this material, you know, uh, part. But I always try to say to everybody, and you know, when we are doing our studies here in Cardiff, to remember that we are the spirits, and also that the world is one, and every single being interact with one another, and like some beings are in another level, like being in a building with many floors, but we are all in this building. That we are all together in this building, but some people can go to the next floor. And that, that is just something that I would, would like to share because when we are dealing with mediumship, it's like we are always surrounded by people, whether they are incarnated or not. So we, we are always going to have this interaction. 
and it's not only from uh, people that, that are already free from the body towards us, but it is the other way around as well. So the, we are in this dynamic um, uh, world that we are constantly interacting with one another. And uh, you said about uh, see people that is asking you, oh, can you do this and that? I have something funny, like some people ask me, oh, have you seen spirits? And I, I look at them, yes, I'm seeing one now. Oh, where, where? And I said, you. <laughs> So people like, they become really freaked out. Oh my God, where are you seeing it now? And I said, you, <laughs> and they come down. <laughs> yeah, very nice, very nice. And I, I, I like pretty much what you said, Liz. And uh, by the way, we are in the, spiritist, in the spiritual world. We are in a different vibration. We are in a different, how can I say? I don't want to make things complicated in the first time we met, but uh, we are in the same area. So we will learn together through this marvelous opportunity we are having in the future, all right? But at least what you said is, is very good. And look, Armo, please. So my experience had started in 2004 when I didn't know anything about spiritism in a painful moment and realized that the spirit is, could give us strength and light uh, for our life by reasoning and studying, because this is a science, like you said. And because this, I think uh, most people uh, don't know uh, the, the spirit is a, a common, a common um, a common situation or a common thing like that, okay? So if you know the science, if you know the study, you can see this kind of, of part of the, the study, it's normal. Very good. Charles? Yes, just to add on a little bit what Ducamo just said. <clears throat> you told also, uh, Guilherme, mediumship is in the nature. It's, it's part of the natural laws. So sometimes you suffer, you, you, the, the things come spontaneously. So if you don't know what it is, you are afraid, you don't know how to cope with it and so on. So the best way when something happens to you from the nature when, is to study about it. And then once you have the knowledge, you can cope with it, you know what to do, you can live with it. So it, it is, I would say, for everyone, huh? because again, the things which are in the nature can happen at any moment spontaneously without, uh, without uh, you awaiting it. So in any how, it's good to know what it is about and how to deal with it. Very good, indeed. <laughs> So let's move a little bit more on the book so to see if other people want to collaborate with us, participate with us. This work is intended to facilitate their journey. So the, the, the whole book is there to make our life easier in the mediumship. So look what he's telling us. This is to make your life easier. So let's not lose that opportunity. Enabling them to take advantage of the fruits of our long and laborious study. To those that are not familiar with Kardec, he spent a lot of time to put that book and the others together. So it's not something like it came out of the blue and he decided to use. So it is a result of a hardship, hard work. But it would be quite erroneous for someone to assume that in order to become an expert on the subject, it is enough to simply learn how to place his or her fingers up on the table to make it turn, or to pick, pick up a pencil, or to make it right. Uh, I would like to make a, I would like to make a brief comment about the table. The whole thing started with a turning table in America and mainly in Paris. That was the beginning. And at that time, they used to ask, 
the people or the mediums to put their hands, lay their hands on the table, and then suddenly the table start to move, to make noises, to, to knock, make, and they start to get the, the attention of the people, and later on, cardiac attention. Okay, and nowadays he's saying get a pencil and write. That's one of the ways that the spirits have to communicate with us. We call that psychography, right? The medium under the influence of the spirit, get a pen and start to write message that could be his own state of, of mind or could be message to enlighten or to give instructions to others, all right? Uh, but what, he, what, what is my take on, on that sentence? We need to study. We may know how to get a pen and write, but if you don't know how, how that happens, how can we protect ourselves if something goes wrong? How can we fully appreciate what is happening if we don't know the details? So be a medium, in comma, is easy. Learn how to be a proper medium with Jesus is a different thing because we need to study, we need to practice, we need to have the commitment to allow us to develop our mediumship in a safe manner. But we will see about that in the future, all right? I just want to give, give some glances of coming, what is coming to my mind. Uh, here we go. One would be equally mistaken to expect to find in this work a universal and infallible recipe for training mediums. What is my take in that sentence? What is written in this book may evolve. We may have to add different experiences. We may have to also study the other books to understand what's going on here. We may have to open our mind and our heart to a large broad spectrum of information to allow us to fully understand mediumship nowadays from the past, we need to be open. We need to be open because as he said here, this is not an infallible recipe. There's so many details that we have to be aware. We have to be careful. We need to pay attention to be successful. I'm saying that not to scare anyone, but to bring to light that mediumship requires attention, requires study. It is a hard work, all right? So, Moving on, although everyone already possesses the necessary inner seeds qualities for becoming a medium, such qualities express themselves in var varying degrees and developing them depends on the cause of the outside the human will. Hmm. What is he telling us here? We all are mediums. Some have a higher level, a higher degree of sensibility. But we are our mediums. But the most important is that things that sometimes are outside the human will need to be taken into account. It's not like I want to be a medium, an ostensive medium, that I will become an ostensive medium. If you are not prepared before you incarnate, if you do not have the physical qualities, you will not. It's not because I want. It's not because I will study that I will become a medium. No, it's not like that. And he's telling us that, right? But we all humans have a mediumship to a certain extent. And when we refer more like mediums, it's those more ostensive mediums, those that can hear, that can see, that can talk, right? So just to give like a, a bit of idea. Anyone want to make any comment on that? It seems no. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Uh, you're in mute. I just want to make a comment that can can mediums or people who have a higher um, 
uh, higher uh, level of sensibility interaction or, or yeah um, can they smell something to do with that spirit yes you can, can smell be part of it as well yes you can yeah you can just to give a, a glance of how what type of smells you can feel like sometimes when we are treating people we are, what we do is we call healing right sometimes we, we smell flowers we smell alcohol we smell different things and it's not from us it's from the other side they are here beside us work with us and we sometimes depending on the medium depending on his characteristics we can smell i had examples where we were in the room 18 mediums treating people giving healing to people suddenly i smell whole roses came so strong that everyone look at each other hmm <laughs> what is that it does not happen every day you need to have certain characteristics among the mediums to to have that as well but it does exist all right you good yep good. thank you let me continue then the rules of poetry painting and music do not make people poets painters or musicians if they do not have the gift in the first place let me stop here i heard a lot of people saying that mediumship is a gift and people think they are gifted and then we start to play with words with meanings no one that has mediumship is a gifted person right mediumship is natural is normal is common and mediumship is there for only one purpose help those who are in need practice charity this is why mediumship is there it is fair to say that some misinformed per people sometimes use mediumship for a different purpose we are not here to judge we are not here to criticize we are here to tell you what we learn over the years right so keep that in mind if you are a medium an ostensive medium you're not gifted you have a commitment with the universe and with yourself to help the others. All right. Any comment? I just want to add that I don't believe in any sort of gift, you know, gifted musician, gifted painter. We know through reincarnation that that actually was achievement. That spirit has achieved certain levels and has, you know, uh, made the effort to progress in those areas. That's why they come with this natural um i would say um high level in arts and music and whatever and it's the same with mediumship you know it's a part of a process and it's not something that's been given you know or made the person special in this sense perfect comment perfect comment and understanding the law of incarnations will support that right yeah perfect what time is it okay such a rules only guide them as they use their natural abilities. Look that again, natural abilities. The same applies to this work. Its purpose is to indicate the means of developing the faculty of mediumship according to each one's ability. I will stop here. No, no, let me see where you go. No, I'll, I'll finish. His ability, and especially to guide the use of the faculty Advantageously, advantageously when it is present. This is not our sole objective, however. We may think that we can create a label, psychophonic medium, uh, psychographic, any other type of medium. But between them, we have a tremendous variety. We can classify all the mediums. For example, we are here together. We can be physical effects mediums, right? Perfect. But 
every one of us, we have different characteristics, different potential. And we have the ability to use in a different purpose as well. So how can we know that? How can we understand that? We have to study through the practice, through the analysis. Like I said in the beginning, we need to be a bit scientist. We need to pay attention that is happening, is happening again, is happening again. Why is that? So there is a tremendous variety of mediums. And the, the best way to develop a mediumship is to be open, to be open to people that have more experience than ourselves. I think you need to do that. Possibly it would be better for you to develop a mediumship doing that particular type of work, things like that, right? Uh, I just want to mention a little bit about that because sometimes we think that uh, medium is A, B, C, D, and that's it. Outside that, cannot be. I heard that before, cannot be. But when we go to the practice, we see that's different. So we need to keep ourselves open to the, that different kind of notion. Such a rules only guide them as they use natural abilities. The same applies to this work. Okay, yeah, you finished this paragraph. Yeah, you? yeah, moving on. Alongside mediums, they say, the number of individuals who are concerning themselves with spirits manifestations is increasing every day. Is it happening nowadays as well? I think it is happening since man is man, since humankind is there. We always have the curiosity of the unknown. And then sometimes we believe because we do not know that is marvelous, that's magic, that is whatever. Uh, I don't see your name. Well, you raise your hand, but I cannot see your name. Open up, let's talk. <laughs> First, thank you very much that I could be here. Thank you. Um, Guilherme, Munir, uh, Charles. Uh, I would like to know um, how I can know limit between a medium some uh, that we know, medium, um, yeah, psychograph, um, and then um, talk, and then uh, between magnetic, magnetic, magnetic mediums. So they, they are, are they medium true? Or can, can do they uh, work uh, together with it, both, both of them? Of, um, of, um, of um, both of, because mm -hmm. my, my, my English is limited. I think I need a couple of hours to all my mind to recover. I can't stop Don't talking. Worry. Don't worry. Now. We are and on the same boat. <laughs> so I will ask if Munir would like to answer that question first. Uh, let me see if I got it right. You, you were talking about uh, uh, People who use their um, magnetic fluids or magnetism. Uh, I would go back to the definition of what Kardec said is we are all mediums. And whatever we have, some people have this natural amount of fluids and so on. If that is combined with mediumship, very clearly with mediumship, we can say that yes, you have both present. But some magnetic phenomena, they are natural, just natural. And we couldn't uh, say that it is per se uh, mediumship. Because mediumship, it has to have the action, as the name said, medium, an intermediary, an intermediary between someone or something and, and um, you know, the world. The, the medium is the bridge. So I would say some of these more, I would say, natural phenomena like magnetism. If it has the interference of the assistance of spirit, yes, it's mediumistic and natural. But if it hasn't got, I mean, it may not necessarily have the assistance. If mediumship is not 
really clear present in that person. But as Kant says, we are all mediums. But Guillaume mentioned that when we say medium here, we are talking about mediums who clearly show the, the faculty. The faculty is, is there and it's, um, you know, sort of a, um, very uh, clearly established. Let me make my comment and then I will ask Charles his take as well. All right. Uh, there are cases and cases. Okay. I will make a, a, a different comparison to try to make things easier to everyone to understand. When a doctor, a surgeon, is performing a surgery in someone, yes, he, he is the doctor who is doing it. But quite often, he's having the right protection from his guardian angels, from the benefactors, and he does not even know. He does not need to know. If he allows himself to resonate with the vibration of the benefactor, he will be helped. And the result of that surgery could be very positive. The same thing happens with magnetism. Some people believe they are only magnetizing because they don't know they have someone with them. They can have someone with them and the result will be better. But there are those that they are poorly, let me put it like that, mechanical, mechanically actuating. So it's hard to say, we need to come to a conclusion, you have to compile more information, study a little bit more, and then eventually you may come to a definitive answer. But to come to a definitive answer is not easy. It's not easy because there are so many cases that uh, may be difficult. What do you think, Charles? I would maybe generalize a little bit more. Uh, a doctor, for instance, can be medium or not. Uh, we talk about mediumship when there is another spirit, a third spirit which is influencing us to do something okay so a doctor for instance he has the science to be able to treat you without having the help of the spirits <clears throat> but the doctor which has this science and on top of this has some inspiration he will find out much quicker what's your problem and the ways to fix it you know while some other doctors, they will ask for uh, analysis and analysis and analysis and whatsoever to discover what it is. So, so you see, uh, the mediumship is, I would say, something which, again, it's in the nature and it's just, how to say, uh, 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 it, it should not dispense you for making your efforts to study. Uh, you cannot rely fully on having the spirits doing everything for you. This does not work. Uh, but uh, you, you, when you have a knowledge, if you have on top of this the help of the benefactors, then of course it multiplies much more uh, your uh, faculty. Very good, very good. Well, I hope our well our contribution make a little bit better. If oh, sorry, does it help? Does it, does it make any sense to you? But you will see that through the continuation, things like that will become clearer and clearer. Okay? And- uh, hey, Thank you very much. Our pleasure. It is our time for today. And I would like to ask Charles if he could make a, a final prayer. And thank you everyone.